Good morning. My name is Kevin O'Hare and on behalf of the board of the final FRCA examiners, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the college for your final FRCA structured oral examinations. This short presentation will explain the format and many of the key aspects of the examinations you'll be taking today. However, if anything remains unclear, you'll have the opportunity to ask the invigilator at the conclusion of the video. No doubt you'll have studied long and hard in preparation for your examinations today, but it's worth reiterating some of the key points that should help you succeed. Stay calm, stay focused, listen to the question and speak slowly and clearly. It just remains on behalf of all of us here to wish you all the very best in your examinations today. Today, you'll be taking two separate structured oral examinations. This morning's examination is SOE1, which tests clinical anaesthesia topics along with the applied clinical science that underpins the short case topics covered. SOE1, which is taken in two parts, consists of four short cases, each with a linked clinical science question. Your second exam, SOE2, which is normally conducted in the afternoon, will focus on clinical anaesthesia and consists of a two-part long case and two standalone clinical short cases not connected to the long case. Your first exam, SOE1, is conducted in two parts, Part A, which is carried out on Floor 1, and Part B, which is conducted on Floor 2. Each part consists of two clinical short cases and two science questions in 26 minutes. The sequence is normally clinical short case, followed by a science question, then a further clinical short case, again followed by the science question it's linked to, but sometimes the linked science question may be covered before the clinical short case. It doesn't matter whether you sit Part A or Part B first. All candidates have been scheduled to attend on both floors, so don't worry, the examinations team will make sure you're in the right place at the right time so that you complete all the questions in your SOE1. After this video, the invigilators will assign you a letter, and this will indicate which station you'll be examined in. When the briefing is complete and the examiners are ready, you'll be taken from this room to the adjacent examination room to complete the first part of your SOE1 exam. When you enter the room, please proceed to your assigned cubicle. Your examiners will welcome you and ask you to take a seat. If you recognise one or both of your examiners, the examiners will decide what action to take. You will only be asked to move to another cubicle if either of your examiners is or have been directly involved in your training, or if they're a relative or a personal friend. There is no requirement to move cubicles if you recognise your examiners from a meeting, or if you met them briefly in a hospital or on a course. Recognition is a two-way process. If the examiner doesn't know the candidate, then there is no requirement to move. However, if your examiners agree that you should swap to another station, they will alert the examiner lead and you'll be moved to a different cubicle. Alternatively, you may be asked to swap if somebody else knows their examiner. If you're involved in a swap, be assured that papers will be amended to reflect any alterations and the electronic marking system will update automatically to take account of all candidates changing cubicles. If there is a third person in the cubicle, this may be a visitor to the exam or an auditor of examiners. They will be seated outside of your line of vision and are there just to observe the exam. They play no part in your assessment or the awarding of marks. If you're uncomfortable with their presence, please inform the examiners before the exam begins and the observer will be asked to move to another cubicle. The exam will not start until everyone is settled. Once everyone is ready and settled in their cubicle, a double bell will ring to indicate the start of the exam. There are up to 12 cubicles on each exam floor. All examiners and candidates will be working through the same questions at the same time. You can normally blank out background noise by concentrating on the examiner speaking to you. However, you should consider other candidates when answering questions in your cubicle. Try to keep the volume of your voice in line with that of your examiners. If you do begin to speak loudly, you may be asked to lower your voice. Don't be put off by this. Just reset your voice to a lower level and carry on. Your first examiner will examine you on a short case topic and then move to the linked science question that underpins the topic covered. After 13 minutes, the bell will ring again to indicate the start of a further short case topic, again with linked clinical science. This will be conducted by the second examiner in the cubicle. 
After 26 minutes, a double bell will sound to indicate the end of the first part of your oral examination. At this point, you are to leave the cubicle and take a seat on one of the chairs set out in the centre of the exam room. Once everyone is seated, your invigilator will lead all candidates from the exam room and take you via the stairs to the briefing area adjacent to the exam room where you will carry out the remaining part of your SOE. When everyone is in the second briefing room, your invigilator will provide a short verbal briefing to remind you of the sequence to expect in your exam, and then assign you a new station letter to indicate which cubicle you'll be examined in for the final part of this exam. Once all candidates are on the exam floor and ready, the rules for examiner and candidate recognition remain the same. You are only required to move cubicles if either examiner is directly involved in your training, a relative, or a friend. Once again, if there is a third person in the cubicle, this may be a visitor to the exam or an auditor of examiners. If you are uncomfortable with their presence, please inform the examiners. Remember, you should consider other candidates when answering questions in your cubicle. Try to keep the volume of your voice in line with that of your examiners. The first part of this second oral exam will consist of two short cases, each with linked clinical science in 26 minutes. Remember, whilst the normal sequence is short case followed by a science question, in some instances the science question may be asked first, so don't be thrown by this, just answer all the questions asked of you in the sequence they are covered. When the second part of your SOE1 is complete, you should make your way out of the exam room and down the stairs. You will then have some free time before your SOE2 clinical anaesthesia exam. You can remain in the college, the lecture theatre and the basement area is available for candidates to use, or you may wish to go outside. Whatever you choose to do, please ensure you are back in good time for your next exam, and don't forget to confirm the time of your SOE exam call with the college officer at the exam's reception. If you hear a fire alarm, please proceed calmly to the nearest fire exit. This may be down the main staircase you've just come up, past reception and out through the main door. Or you may be directed down the back staircase and out of the fire exit onto Theobald's Road. Please follow the instructions of the lead examiner. The muster point for the college is in Red Lion Square. Please remain there and wait further instructions. If you have any questions, please ask the invigilator now. And all the very best with your exam today.